Right, I'm 42 years old, and um, the biggest question we should be asking ourselves right now is what happens to us at the end of our life, right? Do we actually get caught up in this like false light white trap upon death? Um, do we get visited by all these like um, loved ones that come forward trying to drag you into this false light? They kind of like get you, zap you, you're back in, playing in, different, in a different body, playing a different role. Now, what I do know is this, is that we all have these fake personas. We all have these masks that we have to take off until we become real. And when we become real, we look around and we know that everything is fake. We understand that we are living in a holographic simulated reality. But who's running the whole shit show behind the scenes? Who's... Is there something behind the scenes that is like feeding off our energy and uh, live, uh, you know, latching onto our low level psyche and using us for a food source? Is that why we are trapped here on the reincarnation trap loop? And that's why this holographic simulated reality probably has been hijacked in some way. And that we are, we've been here playing out numerous different roles over and over again for thousands upon thousands of years. It's a great interesting concept in the spiritual community and I uh, went through a massive spiritual awakening back in 2012. It was very heavy, very scary. Nobody understood what I was talking about. Everybody just thought I'd gone crazy, lost my shit, but I had to go through the spiritual awakening alone. And along the way you find people on similar paths that turn out to not be the true authentic selves. It dampens you a little bit because you just want people, you want to find people where you can connect and click with. And I've noticed those people are on a high spiritual level uh, have no friends. And you know when you want to try and find somebody to talk to, you're never going to find them around the corner or down the road or whatever. They're always like uh, the other side of the country or the other side of the world. And, and you just love to just go and meet these people and sit around a table and talk for hours and and loop with people and express yourself freely critical thinking is a, is a must i mean we live in a society today where you can just mention the earth is flat and just watch people malfunction just by that flat word and just watch them watch their programming just break in front of them it's a trigger switch it is one of the most bizarre things i've ever seen in my life just say that the earth is flat to somebody and you watch them erupt in the face they like want to kill you and that's family members it's because you have broke down their programming right in front of them and it's funny and scary at the same time we are living in a fake ass society today i think it's more faker than it's ever been i mean you go on tiktok and you see half naked skimpy women doing things for attention when they have got so much more going for them and they can go on OnlyFans and they can make shit tons of money and they, and they do whatever. And, and they're not uh, valuing themselves much at all. It's the same thing with these young men nowadays. They just want to take steroids and uh, get on the trend. They just want to take steroids, get on the trend and outdo each other and chase clout, chase women. And it's all these fake personas like I've been talking about. It's just one mask after the other mask. Literally, we are living in a society that's completely fake everything's fake even spirituality is fake i ain't come across many people that's been authentic about it they're making money from it now i've done many trips as well as in my time to know that i am in a holographic simulated reality i did 15 grand trips by myself in a field that literally blew me into another universe the reason probably i didn't get a bad trip from that i probably got points for it is because of the courage of doing that by myself out in the open and that ripped me totally in off i was communicating with this uh, entity what they refer to as god i call it the love source the unconditional love source others will call it god or allah whatever they call it i call it the love source and it was communicating with me and it was telling me to pass messages on i was in a complete bliss state of happiness happiness tears streaming down my face absolutely just tears of joy happiness i was exhausted after that trip and i was also crying three or four days later because 
I felt like something had let go of me and I didn't want it to let go of me, if that makes any sense. At the beginning of these trips as well as, they kick sand in your face and it's stuff that you don't want to see about yourself, but you just take it on the chin. And then this energy is trying its best to try and get in, inside of you. Ego death, and that's it. She's inside of me, vibrating all the way up and down through me with unconditional love like I have never felt in my life. And it's one of the most beautiful, profound experiences ever that I have ever had. I said to myself after, I don't need to keep going down here every week or every month to get what I've got today because it changed my life and my perspective. I'll go down here like once a year or two and do it then because I'm going to have a lot of things going off in the, in the year. There's going to be ups and downs, probably losing people, not losing people. I don't know, you go through it, don't you? Relationship issues, all that. And so I said to myself, I'm not going to abuse this um, medicine. Once that entity, energy or whatever is inside of me vibrating, I want it to know that I'm not abusing it, if that makes any sense. It's one of the most amazing feelings that I have ever had in my life. And that's so bad of me saying that. Like, it's just one of those feelings that you never get here on this realm. Not even close to uh, that love. Not through butterflies, not through having a newborn baby, not through sex, nothing. Nothing can beat that state of bliss that I was in. After that first experience, I like a drowned rat. I was exhausted. I just, I just, there was no more tears coming out of my eyes. And I remember when I was on that trip as well as, it was prodding me in certain places and it hurt, but I was just laughing. I was laughing. And as I said, I was communicating with this uh, entity and uh, it, it, by telepathy and it was talking and, and it, and as I was in a state of bliss, it told me that you know a certain person and you need to pass a message on. And I said, I can't. It said, you can, and I want you to pass this message on. And I said, she won't understand. He said, she'll understand more than you know. I passed the message on as soon as the trip ended, but I didn't know that she lost her mum. I've, I've not seen that person in seven to ten years. But I had to pass that message on. And that also put me on the map to know that I'm also in some kind of holographic simulated reality. Now, it's another bit. So in the spiritual community, they say, with this false light white trap upon death, right and uh, you get zapped uh, by you get lured in and then zapped on the reincarnation trap loop uh, but first you have um, have a, a 360 pentagram view of your life but they'll tell you that you're not good enough and that you have to come back because uh, this is about life lessons but as you come back they zap you memory wipe you now that don't sit well with me so what am i supposed to be trying to change here right if I don't know, if I don't have a memory of it or whatsoever, you're already good enough. That's what you have to remember as well as, is that you come from the source of love. You, you've been there, done everything whatsoever. You don't need to change anything about you. You are good enough. So what are these entities talking about at the end? They don't make any sense. So this is gonna tie nicely in with this story. Me and my partner uh, lost a baby and she had to have them injections in her belly to get rid of it, which caused strain on our relationship. And it caused even more strain on the relationship when uh, her granddad died as well as. For a whole year, we thought we was gonna split up. And yet we got told to go and see this psychic. Don't give him your name, don't give him any information, give him nothing. Just turn up on the day. And so she did, she turned up on the day. And he brought her granddad through. And her granddad turned around and said, go and take a holiday together and go and sort yourself out. Everything will fall into place. So we went to took a holiday, try and rekindle like our relationship, you know, and uh, we was intimate and stuff that night. I remember the next morning, there was an unusual glow about her, which lasted about two weeks. She had this golden blonde hair. She was beaming with like light. And I just, for review, I was looking and I was like, I wonder if anybody else can see this, because I can see this. And I told her about it. And when she come back off holiday, her uh, next door neighbor was like, you've got a lovely glow about you. What you been doing? Because she was near her death, the next door neighbor. She had like a couple of months to live and she was dying of cancer, but she picked up on it as well as. And check this, this is a whole thing of the story is she was pregnant she had our baby named harper 
Ready for the, ready for it? Born on her granddad's birthday. Can't make that shit up. You can't make that shit up. That love that um, that woman held for her granddad, who died, who she grieved in a whole year, like, still hasn't let go of to this day. We had a baby on his birthday. You can't make that shit up. It was beautiful. And I remember when I saw my little baby, Harper, I looked through her eyes and I just, it was that unconditional love between each other. It was magic, magic moment for me in my life. And um, whether people say that I wouldn't bring children into this world because of because of how it is today. Nobody will understand until you have kids yourself and that bond that you have with your, with your child. It's, that's, it's beautiful. So I hope I've covered some ground today. So if there's this false light white trap upon death and we are playing the reincarnation trap loop over and over again, what's this story about then? Because something was looking down on her at the time, obviously, for this to happen. So the conclusion to the end of this. So maybe then, the way it goes is, if all that is correct, life lessons, we've got to keep coming back. Maybe we can pull ourselves away from the electromagnetic pull at the end of our lives and avoid the false light white trap upon death. And just pull ourselves into the darkness, pull ourselves away, maybe, perhaps. Maybe that's the way out. Or maybe near the end of your life, the ego has to let go. And then that beautiful energy, what I had on the trips, will take you where you need to be taken to and dealt with there. I probably do believe that when we come out of this body that we can float, fly, and do whatever, and we're, we're in this kind of like liquid, liquid facial form energy. Over time, it probably can get boring and we need things to do. We probably do need to come into these game-like movies um, to play out different character roles. So yeah, we're asking the big questions here. Becoming the authentic you, becoming more wizardry, powerful, magnetically powerful. But to ask those questions, what happens to us? What happens to us when we leave this body? Great chat. Thanks for listening.